y'all welcome back to making up with sydney and today i'm doing a review slash comparison of the huda beauty winter solstice palette and the wet and wild mega glow highlighting palette so i am going to be talking about the pros and cons of each i'm going to do some swatches i'm also going to tell you about whether i will be keeping either or both of these in my collection so i want to kind of start this off with saying Colorful highlighting palettes have kind of been the thing lately, and it's kind of crazy because last year, this time, really, to my knowledge, the only super colorful highlight palette was the Moon Child by Anastasia of Beverly Hills, and now it's just kind of like very common. So I want to kind of show you both palettes. So neither of them have a mirror. This is the outside of the Huda palette, the hollow in it. Is really pretty right here and then on the inside you have another hollow star and then you get a cream highlight and three powders you have frosted kiss arctic glow northern lights and winter rose so it's a cardboard packaging it's a nicer packaging than this wet and wild one this is really cheap whereas that's a lot thicker you can kind of tell um, it has this kind of really cheap plastic right here and there is nothing just the ombre of the cardboard and you have four shades here and you have sweet peony over here diamond lily then you have wild cosmos and blushing azalea so these are really pretty and I thought because these palettes looked so insanely similar, I would kind of do like a review comparison and maybe even only decide to keep one, which I've kind of already made up my mind and I'll explain that in a bit. So I'm going to swatch Frosted Kiss, which is the cream, right on my wrist. And I'm going to try and build it up so you can actually see it, but that is it right there not really a whole lot to it I think with the lighting I'm gonna do it on the back of my hand so let's see here that's frosted kiss not a whole lot to it and really I wasn't that impressed with it I love Huda's highlight kits so and usually the creams aren't my favorite but that's beside the point so this is a more subtle highlight from the wet and wild kit and this is in Blushing Azalea. And this one I would say is similar in color and effect to Frosted Kiss from the Huda palette. So I'm going to get my wipes really quick. Wipe off my fingers. So the color I was most excited about it in both of these palettes was the gold by far. I love golden highlights, whether it's winter or summer, so I was really pumped about that. So let's do those ones next. This is in Northern Lights. As you can see, it moves around quite a bit. And I'd say this palette is a little chunkier than the other highlighting palettes. So that is Northern Lights by Huda Beauty. And this right here is Wild Cosmos from Wet n Wild. There's those two next to each other, my finger. And here's Wild Cosmos next to it. It's You get the same effect like when I move my hand. That's why I kind of, you know, when I saw the palette, they seemed more similar in the pictures. But you do get similar tones. You get two pinks, you get a gold, and you get an interesting blue. So that is Arctic Glow. And there it is on my hand. It is really pretty. And then I'm going to use my pinky to swatch Diamond Lily, which is this one. And there's Diamond Lily. So Arctic Glow has more of a purple shift, where Diamond Lily, I believe, is just blue. And the last two really aren't dupes at all, but hey whatever we got winter rose so there's winter rose right there and then i'm going to take i believe it's sweet peony 
which is this beautiful, beautiful pink, and put it next to it, even though those aren't really dupes, obviously. So, my thoughts on these palettes, it's pretty, it's pretty like clear cut that I think the Wet n Wild is a better value. And why is because for me and for my skin tone, these are all much more wearable than these. I love the gold in the Huda palette, but the cream was really unimpressive to me. And even though I got it for $36 with the VIB sale, I just don't think it was worth it. This pink right here, I wouldn't use it as a blush, and I personally wouldn't use it as a highlighter on my skin. I think it would look pretty on someone with a deeper complexion. However, I just personally don't see me using it. Um, Huda has had darker colors before, but you could kind of like sheer them out, or they were more universally flat it, flattering. Flatting. <laughs> flattering. <laughs> And then this blue, I just, I don't know. I wasn't really feeling it. These were, to me, these three shades in particular were just darker colors of the Moonchild Glow Kit, which I have in love. And it's been very used and well loved by me. Where this, I haven't really used it. I used the Northern Lights the other day and I really did like it. But because I'm such a like gold highlighting freak, I have like way more gold highlights, even some that are similar to this. So... Nothing was super unique for me and my collection. However, if you're looking to try a Huda um, kit and you don't have colored highlights, I think this is a great one. Especially if you have medium to deep skin, I think this would look beautiful. Whereas this Wet n Wild one, I am keeping it. It was $15 and you get four pans, which if you got four pans of the Wet n Wild Mega Glow highlights, that would come out to a total of $20. I love these. I do think they could work for deeper skin tones as well as light and medium. I think definitely for light skin, um, lighter skin tones, this one and this one would be great. I think for deep, this one would be great if you want like a true highlight. I think medium, that would work really well. But honestly, I think you could play with all of these and make them work the way you want them to. What I often like to do with darker highlights on my skin is put it high up on the cheekbones and then pop a really light color in the center because then it still gives you that highlight and then you get to wear like a funky fun color. So personally, I think this, you could make it work for really anyone. Um, and if it doesn't work for your skin tone, you could use any of these as eyeshadows, but I think this is a more universally flattering um, palette than this one. So I will be keeping this one and not this one. I do believe I'm going to return it just before. It's just a lot of money to spend to not be 100% happy with a palette. And I already have a few others of these and I love them and I use them all the time. So I would rather hold on to those and then just pass this guy back to Sephora and do a return. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it and give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!